Well, I was not planning on doing another video in this new tank build video series for another few months until I had some corals in the tank so I could do a progress report. But as you can see with the air bubbler in there, something is amiss with the tank and I want to keep it real so I wanted to come back and do a video. I had a, um, a real unfortunate incident this past weekend that is such a bummer. It, it killed nearly half of my fish in this tank. I had 21 fish. Everything um, in terms of the fish were doing great, really healthy. I had no losses up until this point, but something happened that I never envisioned could ever happen that killed nine of my fish. Such a bummer. So let me go into the sump room and explain what happened. So this is my KH director to KH director set, which has a doser underneath it and the, the three dosing heads to the uh, left are what are used to measure the DKH. And it's actually doing a measurement right now. But this fourth head is open and my plan for the new tank was to dose nitrate because I'm going to be using a um, Kato reactor. So I, I had this container all filled up, 1,000 mLs of nitrate, and the solution is actually ammonium nitrate. Well, every three months, religiously, I do maintenance on each of these dosing heads because it's really important to do the maintenance. You really have to make sure there's no dirt on the rollers, on the tubing, on the covers, so that these dosers can perform at an optimal level. Anyway, this past week and I was doing maintenance, I had the covers off, I had done the maintenance on these three dosing heads, and I did maintenance on that fourth dosing head, which was all hooked into the nitrate solution, which was filled up to a thousand mLs. Anyway, so I pulled, you know, these uh, rollers out and I used some acetone to clean the rollers. Even though this thing was barely used, I dosed a little nitrate before. I was like, ah, what the heck, I'll just, you know, I cleaned the, uh, the first three dosing heads. <laughs> I'll clean the fourth one, even though it doesn't really need it. Well, unbeknownst to me, when I popped off these um, rollers and had the tubing uh, out, I, you know, I opened up the tubing. Here's a look at the tubing in a, a spare tube and packaging. Um, well, what apparently happened, I didn't see it happen at the time. What apparently happened was that since I have this um, container about three feet above my sump, is that there was some serious back pressure and it siphoned everything in this bottle into this sump. Whoa. And I've been doing, you know, I've been using peristaltic dosers for many, many years. And that, something like that has never, ever, ever happened to me. And I never even imagined it as a possibility. So I did the maintenance and I went, and well, I went skiing. I went skiing for a couple hours and then I came back home. Okay, so I came home from skiing and you know, I just came down here to do a little work, just a little, little work at the desk over there. And you know, I walked by the tank and I, I didn't see any fish were out swimming around. You know, the lights were on and I'm like, wow, that's really weird. What's going on with that? So I don't know, I didn't think much of it. And I was working at the desk and the next thing you know, out of the corner of my eye, I see a fish jump completely out of the tank and land on the floor. Whoa, what was going on? So I came up to the tank and I looked really closely and the fish were in trouble. All the fish were in trouble. I saw a, a few on their sides. They were all gasping for air. They're all inside the rock work right in here. It's just hiding like what the heck is going on here? So I had a crisis on my hand, but I did not know what was going on. So I, initially thought that maybe there was some 
um, spare voltage. You know, I was doing some maintenance. I was doing some other maintenance on the tank before I was cleaning the dosing heads. So I thought, all right, maybe it's some stray voltage and it's freaking out the fish because it was, it was a systematic thing. Every fish was impacted. I also thought maybe it was the acetone that I was using to clean the, 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 the dosing heads. But everybody in this tank was fine. You know, the, uh, the, the fish tank over here, nobody was freaking out. Everybody was hunky-dory. So I, I, you know, I ruled out the acetone. Anyway, I eventually noticed that this bottle was, was empty. So it dumped 850 mLs into the sump. And I was in scramble mode. I really was in scramble mode. So the first thing I did to try to remedy the situation was I did a 30% water change, you know, when it happened. Later on the day, I did, I think, maybe another uh, 20 to 25% water change. So that was going to be my plan of attack was just do a whole bunch of water changes. And obviously you can't do, um, you know, significant water changes back to back to back. So I, I needed to be sensitive to that, but I wanted to do at least 30% water changes on a daily basis. And a reef keeping buddy of mine who's got a chemistry background also recommended I use this product. It's called Ammo Chips and it removes ammonia. So I put a whole bunch, you know, in the filter socks, in the sump to try to also absorb the ammonia that had gotten into the tank. So the day the accident happened, I did some testing just to kind of see where I was at. I knew it was going to be bad. I tested nitrates. My nitrates were at 25 parts per million before the, uh, the stuff hit the fan and they tested out 100 parts per million. So wow, really, really, really high. So I did a, a test with the ammonia and that, that tested out a 0.5. So it was bad. That, that was the issue and, and they were um, certainly very stressed out from that elevated ammonia. So after a few days of using the ammo chips, and doing the large water changes, my nitrates dropped back down to 25 parts per million and my ammonia is now at 0.15 parts per million. Perhaps that's a false reading since the ammo chips are still in the system. I do plan to keep the ammo chips and this uh, air going for a few more days and I will probably do another couple of large water changes. But the good thing here is that the fish are eating. They started eating a couple of days ago. They're picking at the rocks like they had been before. They're not looking stressed out. So, you know, one silver lining here is that this is a very, very young reef tank. Didn't have a lot of corals in it. So I was able to really just focus on the fish. So it was a blessing. I'm really, really glad that I took things very slowly with this tank. I mean, who could have ever imagined this sort of thing would happen, but it did. So it was a good thing that um, I didn't have a whole bunch of frags, SPS frags in this tank, because those would have been gone. They would have been done. Another blessing is that this accident didn't happen to this established 187 gallon tank, because that would have been a total wipeout. I think I would have lost all the acros, all the corals in this tank. Obviously the fish would have been in big trouble as well. And plus, I've got a couple of frag tanks plugged into the 187 gallon display. So yeah, that would have been devastating. So that's certainly a plus that it didn't happen to this system. Okay, so what am I gonna do to prevent this sort of thing from happening in the future? Because it will, it can. Well, I'm gonna use these check valves and put them in line on my, um, all the quarter inch tubing that I use for dosing on the tubing that is leaving the dosing head. So I'm going to have the check valves on these uh, output lines for everything that I'm dosing, not only for this new system, but also for the uh, current system. So yeah, it's, it's humbling hobby for sure.